When most of us think of the great Aussie backyard, the thought that springs to mind is the big grassy lawn with kids playing in a sprinkler. But experts are saying that it isn't sustainable. With the huge load of water, chemicals and fertiliser needed to make it look half decent, these days it's too expensive for us and the environment. So before you try rolling out the green carpet, try this on for size. What Glenda Lindsay has managed to achieve in her inner city Melbourne backyard will blow your mind. So growing food organically at home means we get to use all our kitchen veggie scraps, um, creating our own compost, and it saves on the environment because instead of having the transport costs of fuel and the commercial food growing costs, uh, we have everything happening right here. What's amazing is this urban Eden used to be an old industrial area, a factory site. If Glenda can do this here, you can do it where you live. Glenda here is certainly a master of working with what's available and making it work for her and her garden. So with these high brick walls, they really pump out the heat in summer. Anything that was water thirsty or wasn't hardy just wouldn't work. So we've worked with that rather than against it. Banana tree in Melbourne. And what's better? Oh, what are you supposed to hang clothes on these things? It's a bit old fashioned. No, what we've done is we've recycled it and it's now a trellis for these gorgeous passion fruit and the lovely yummy things hanging off it in baskets. So it's a whole new life, really. Yep, everything in this garden has a purpose. It might look fabulous, but this backyard is actually all about function. So why are these two friends? Uh, the nasturtiums are great companion plants for pear trees because they help keep away some of the pests. So these aren't for the plants, these are for us. Uh, it's uh, Santalina, it's a variety of cotton lavender, and it's an insect repellent. So if there's any bikies around, rub a bit between your fingers and on your ankles, it keeps them away. Now this is as close as Glenda gets to a traditional lawn. Obviously this isn't grass. What is it? It's thyme, T-H-Y-M-E. Um, so it's very hardy, very drought tolerant. Um, it smells gorgeous when you walk on it. And in summer, there's lots of little flowers that attract the bees. And of course, that helps pollinate all the other plants. And whoa, these are busy bees, because there are lots of other plants in this garden. Not only does Glenda grow her own fruit and veg, she's handed over this section of the garden, which she calls Luscious Lane, to neighbours from nearby apartment blocks. There's nothing better than being able to come over here half an hour before cooking dinner and pick some fresh salad. It allows me an opportunity to grow the vegetables that I love growing or since I was a kid. The best thing I love about this garden is the satisfaction of being able to eat something that I've grown with my own hands. OK, so you're probably wondering, how does Glenda grow all of this without having a massive water bill? Well, it's all about making the most of nature's free water supply. So we catch every last drop of rain from both our own and our neighbour's roof in our rainwater tanks. So really every Australian home needs a rainwater tank? Absolutely. This one on Luscious Lane is 2,100 litres, and then over on our side we've got 22,000 litres. Yep, I know what you're thinking. There's no way you could ever fit a rainwater tank that massive in your backyard. But I challenge you to even spot the tank in Glenda's yard. Okay, I give up. Where is it? We're standing on it. Are you serious? Yeah, we wanted to save some space, so wow. we decided to put the water tank under the deck. Um, so we catch all the, all the rain, it goes into the tank, and we have it for when it's not raining. Another source of water you're probably wasting is your grey water. So this is our grey water system, and grey water is basically the water that is already used once from your shower or your washing machine. So can you just pour it on your garden? Well, you might want to make a few changes to your washing machine detergent and your shower soaps and so on. Um, but yes, you can use it anything as long as it's not edible. Having gone to so much trouble to collect and save her water, the last thing Glenda wants to do is to waste it. And there's another valuable lesson here for us lesser mortals. Glenda, you are obviously serious about your mulch. It makes such a difference for retaining the moisture in the soil and also helps protect the, uh, the root zone of the plants. What I love about the garden is that it just feeds all my senses. It's visually gorgeous, it smells fantastic, and most of it you can eat. Well, sitting here looking at and tasting your garden, you sure do realise that this definitely beats a boring old lawn. <laughs>